ready? Mm-hmm. Opponents ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. Audience ready. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Starting time now. Today, thank you everybody for being here to engage in this debate that we're about to um, go through. The resolution we're discussing today is that the United States federal government should abolish the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, resolutional analysis is going to be a policy debate. Um, weighing mechanism is going to be net benefits. Um, some definitions. Everything is going to be contextually defined. The United States federal government is um, that which will be acting. First, a little bit of background. Um, the Trump administration, um, the current presidential administration, is gutting the EPA and setting their own precedent um, for views on environmental control and their own um, and influencing it with their own refutations of climate change um, and their own opinions on um, the in, uh, environmental management. Um, our plan text is going to be uh, that through an act of Congress, vetoed by the President, then um, overruled by the three-fourths vote through the Senate and House of Representatives, we will um, abolish the Environmental Protection Agency. The actors will be Congress um, and in the veto of the President. Uh, and then uh, Congress um, funding um, and enforcement will be through normal means. However, the enforcers here are going to be the states. Um, as defined by the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution, any right not delegated to the federal government will be inherently delegated to the states. Point of information, yes. Can you repeat the context, please? Context is that through an act of Congress vetoed by the President, then overruled by the Senate, House, three-fourths um, overrule, um, the United States federal government will abolish the Environmental Protection Agency. Yep. All right, so uh, moving on to our first advantage, um, which is state responsibility. The harm that we're currently experiencing is that the EPA is a federally run um, uh, a federally run, uh, is federally run, meaning that the federal government sets standards and regulations for water purity and air quality in the United States, and states have their hands tied because the regulations are set by the federal government. The link here is going to be that the plan passes um, and gives power to the states. First internal link is going to be of Flint, Michigan. Currently, um, Michigan has been experiencing a water crisis for the better half of a decade now. Um, and by doing this, we allow Michigan to negotiate on its own as a state with other states to increase its budget for water purity so it can address um, or more directly address um, the water issue that it is um, and experiencing in Flint. Um, our second internal link is going to be uh, uh, that of California. Um, California is the forefront of environmental action for the United States, and by passing this plan, we will allow California and other states um, to uphold the Paris Climate Agreement and or develop their own similar document that would abide by the standards and regulations of the Paris Climate Agreement. By doing this, we allow not only California, but other states to address the environmental change the world is experiencing, that way they can influence them as their own entities. Yes? Is California right now uh, signed into the Paris Agreement? Um, no, California is not because of the actions of the United States. However, this plan would allow California to create a similar document for other states to uphold that could mimic um, or mirror the same uh, regulations and standards set by the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, impacts, uh, impacting this first advantage out, first of all, we're going to gain an impact through Flint, Michigan. Not only will we allow them communication with their states, thereby strengthening the bond between states and the U.S., but we will be able to get them clean water, and what clean water means for Flint, Michigan is life. Life in um, Flint, Michigan is becoming not only um, unbearable, but almost dangerous um, to the extent that we're having fatalities in the area due to the lack of clean water that we have in Flint, Michigan. This is harming not only their economy, but more importantly, their population. And second, not only California, but the communication of California and their cooperation with other states. This will increase, again, cooperation and cohesion between the United States um, and will be able to allow these states that are more forward in environmental um, action to take a step towards um, assisting efforts with global warming and not only providing a safer atmosphere for themselves, but a safer atmosphere by putting that step forward for the entire world. Our second advantage today is going to be that of democracy. The first harm is that there is currently a bipartisan divide and an excess of executive power, both with the Obama administration and exponentially increased through the Trump administration. Link plan passing um, will allow the Tenth Amendment to give the power and um, the rights to act um, in environmental realms uh, to the states because it will not be delegated to the federal government through the EPA. Um, the internal link is going to be uh, that this is going to allow states to reclaim authority and reclaim their stance as an acting entity in the United States. Um, the impact here is that this will set a precedent not only for this um, specific policy, but for policies in the future, allowing states to see that they do have a realm in which they can act on their own. They do have an authority in the United States 
and they are the reason that the United States exists in the first place. This will be one of many steps towards a, um, a nonpartisan government, as we will see in action, um, through, uh, as defined through our plan text, an action by all parties acting against the administration to give this power to the people, the people of the states. By giving the states the power, not only do we show them that the administration is not the group that's running the government, but we will give them the opportunity to act and see that these, um, that these states are going to be more locally run, and it will show them that they have a stronger voice than they believe they had um, in the status quo. By giving these states the power, it's no longer a suit running their government. Now it's, that, um, it's the congressman that they elected for their district. It's the senator they elected for their state. And it'll be the state government that they, they'll support. This will get more people out voting in their states, um, a, a larger amount of participation from citizens all around the U.S., allowing states not only to re, um, reinforce the idea of democracy that America loves so much, but give this power back to the people, which is where it should have been in the first place. Um, for the reason of uh, state responsibility that we will be um, not only flushing this power down to the state line, allowing these states to take hold of their own water purity and um, air regulation, um, but also for our second advantage, um, which is going to be the precedent of democracy in the United States. We should be seeing those for the affirmative today. Thank you very much. <coughs> The affirmative is entitled to one fiat adapter via the violation of fiat three actors versus tender predictability, at point which everybody uses one actor. We should be using one actor. We are predicted to be using one actor. The point is they don't flow through this because they fiat three. Next is the fairness. This allows them to explode negative ground by allowing net benefits through the use of two other actors as opposed to simply Congress. Next is the voters versus education. At the point of which fairness is internal to education. There's no education if we do not have a fair debate. You're going to be voting them down. There's going to be an a priori issue. And you're going to be viewing this through the lens of competing interpretations. Cool. Disadvantage. Uniqueness. Currently through the Clearing Air Act enacted through the EPA, we're taking steps to make the air a better air. You know, cleaner. <laughs> Uniqueness point two is that this also helps subsidize green technology. Through the EPA, we're currently allotting subsidies to private companies in order to increase green technology, which is key to solving the issues of climate change. This is something that states cannot do at the level that the federal government can. Next is the link. Plan cuts off the EPA at the federal level, they, which is the biggest provider for a green power, through the Green Power Partnership to private industry to subsidize green technology. Internal link, businesses can't do anything without these subsidies, a point at which the green technology industry is still not completely profitable. There is no way to um, enact these enact these technologies without a government subsidies, which they will not be receiving through the states. We're seeing the impacts of decreased quality of life of millions of Americans. We're not just talking about Clinton, Michigan here, we're talking about the entire United States of America covered over a cloud of smog. Moving on to the second disadvantage of model. Asian weakness, China and India are currently the third world largest polluters. They will only enact if the United States does it. Now, no one state in the United States has enough hegemony or enough influence over these countries to do it on their own. We need the federal government to take action. Link the plan cuts off efforts of environmental protection at the federal level. Internal link, this leads to focus on oil production and the use of resources. Internal link two is that this decreases the United States credibility. This decreases the United States hegemony. This decreases the United States soft power over the rest of the world. At the point where we're no longer being seen as leaders. This leads to the impact of extinction because of global warming. At the point at which not only is the United States not going to be doing it, China will not be doing it, and India will not be doing it. There is absolutely no way that we can ever check back for this. This also leads to no solvency on their case, to the point which the states do not have enough hegemony to make other countries follow. Next is the death from overuse of resources. Even if we don't die because 
of extinctions through global warming. We're going to be using all our resources, resources that are finite and at the point at which we don't have uh, other green tech alternatives. We're going to die out. All right. Next is a counter plan. The United States government should abolish the EPA by decreasing the bureaucracy and the red tape of surrounding the EPA, i.e. giving them more autonomy. This solves the affirmative because we decrease the power that Congress and the President have over the EPA, which makes their case non-unique. Yes, your question? 100 percent. There you go. Alright. First is competition, first is preferability, because it doesn't buy into disadvantages, this also turns a case and has independent benefits of increased efficiency and less wasted resources, which means that there's more money to actually invest into green technology. Next is the fact that one oh, see it's solvency. <laughs> first is the rid of bureaucratic red tape. This allows um, for a tech back on global warming, projects strength and leadership to other countries, and because we're mutually exclusive, any attempt at perm is going to be severance, we solve for the affirmative, and we have enough benefits both for the counterpoint. Moving on to case. First is a non-unique, even though the APA is currently the federal uh, idea for the environmental protection, states can still do it. There's nothing holding states from having their own version of the EPA. They can uphold their own ideas of what environmental protection should be like. Flint can negotiate right now. There's nothing stopping them from doing it, which also gives them no link. This doesn't give more power to the states. The states already have this power. They're, they're attempting to give it. They can already negotiate on their behalf. Their case is terminally not unique, which means that they have absolutely no internal link because this doesn't increase negotiations for Flint. They already have this power. It simply didn't work, and they needed what the federal government to step in, which they're not allowing the federal government to do anymore, which actually makes the situation in Flint even worse. Next, um, no second internal link. At the point at which um, they say it's going to lead to other states to follow their lead on climate agreements, they can still do this right now. They can have their own climate agreements. They can do these things. Simply is that they have less solvency because other countries will not follow an individual state, which leads to no impacts. No Flint, Michigan. In fact, it gets worse because there's no federal aid anymore, which leads to less life um, and stuff. Bad stuff. No one. <laughs> All right, on to the second disadvantage. First is the non unique, not to mention that count plan solves for this, such as we share this bipartisan divide at the point on which we're increasing the autonomy for the EPA. It doesn't matter what Trump says. We're giving them more autonomy and we're reforming it, which means that they're more profitable, which means that they can actually invest, which means that we solve better. Onto the link, they say that it gives the states the 10th Amendment right to do whatever they want. They already have this, they can already have their own version of the EPA, which means that a school solves. Next is internal link, they say that um, they now have more increased independence. No internal link, they already have this independence, which means that they can actually garner their impacts of democracy, not to mention that their use of the Supreme Court, which are unelected officials, actually decreases their own impact of democracy. They have terminal no solvency for the impact of democracy, not to mention that they make it worse by making unelected officials legislate over the people. I mean, think about it, Congress is enacting this, the people who are actually represented, and then it's being vetoed, and then by the Supreme Court it's being reenacted, this leads to a complete decrease in democracy. They don't have any solvency for this impact. Let me check time. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, on democracy, say that currently, like if you look at like states like Texas and anything else, they have different ideas from California. So there's no way that they technically going to agree with that. Next is the fact that even though states, sure, even if you buy the idea, they would have more independence and more autonomy through plan, which they do not. Some states, like Texas, is never going to follow California. This means that they have absolutely no solvency for other states following other states. Which means that even through their own incorrect framework, saying that they're going to have more power or whatever, they still can't actually solve because the states aren't going to be making it better. So at the end, you have two options. You can vote for the affirmative, a case that is basically slow, a case that is abusive, and a case that doesn't solve, or you can vote for the negative, at the point at which we can prove that a plan is not that beneficial, at the point at which we give you a better alternative that solves all the affirmative's harms. And we have net benefits of increasing funding to green technology through private enterprises. And by making it more efficient, it means that we're actually going to be solving better. And even if you don't buy these arguments, you still have the theory sheet, which is going to be winning the debate. Um, so for your theory sheet, What's up? what would work for that, for the one fiat? What would we have said that would not have triggered this? Solid. Um, Congress passed the plan. Congress? Or, um, uh, yeah, executive order. 56. 56. Yep. Gotcha. Thank you. Cool. And with that, I'll see you the rest of the time.
time now. Okay, first of all, oh, I just asked a question. They said, what would work? What would not trigger this multi fiat actor? And they said Congress. And then they said the 50 states. So I hate to tell you this, but Congress has 435 members in the House, 100 members in the Senate, three non-voting people. Those are all the people who function in Congress. I'm sorry, this is protected time. Thank you. 50 states. All 50 of the states. So we need this interpretation under the fact that we are, are operating under the United States federal government, and the United States federal government is one actor. That would be the most topical resolution of the act is we just had the United States federal government do it, and all of our actors are within the United States federal government. Because of that, you are going to oh, ignore their standards on pre predictability and fairness. This is very predictable. It does not. It obviously did not act, get them out of any ground. They had two disadvantages, and then they had a counter plan, and then they had a, had a number of on-case arguments. It's and um, with addition to fairness, once again, this did not actually skew them out of any ground. It said that it overthrew the ground, but it didn't. In fact, they didn't even address this specific way that the specific mechanism with we, which, which, with which we were doing this. Yeah. When Congress finally passes something, is it passed as an entity, or is it 430 uh, people individually passing legislation? Um, it is not 435 people, but any over half. And actually, that's not all of Congress. That's just the House. So for just the House, it has to be over half in order to pass it. Is it passed as an entity? That's 230. Is it passed as an entity? All right. And so then, yeah, it's one single act of legislation. That's why it is not multi-fiat after. It's one single legislation that is passed. All right. Then on to competing interpretation. Here, this is the competing interpretation. And as long as we are within resolution, we have the ability to fiat as however many actors as we need. Because inherently, the United States federal government is an infinite number of moving parts. And in order to fiat anything coming out of the United States federal government, you need to fiat an infinite number of moving parts, just for the enforcement. All right, let's go on to the disadvantages. Um, all right, so first I'm gonna talk about the uniqueness because they said that um, the EPA is subsidizing green technology and that it's doing well. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so by the 2018, the budget will be cut by 31%, and this is the lowest the EPA budget will be in 40 years. That's the thing, is that it takes a very long, very together effort in order to combat climate change. It takes, four, it takes the four years that Trump will be in office in order to completely ruin any chance we have of making any progress. I'm sorry, busy. Um, okay, so onto that. So he's going to cut this budget, and then they're not going to subsidize green technology. In fact, this... This um, directly contradicts our uniqueness on our first advantage, but he did not talk about it. This directly contradicts the fact that the EPA is gutted. It is not doing anything good anymore. That's why we need to kill it in order to give this power back to the states. And I'll talk about states' power in a second. Yeah, this is the last question, by the way. All right, so uh, do you have any points on, for example, Trump's programs on increasing subsidies to private business? Um, I have zero comments. To the EPA? Yeah, no, none. All right. Um... So the internal link is that businesses cannot make money without government. However, the tech bubble is in California, and California has the most progressive by far out of the entire nation. And um, once again, I'll talk more about states later, but let's go down to the impacts. The impacts is that this is going to decrease quality of life overall for the U.S. First of all, this is a federal agency directly overseen by the um, executive administration. So as long as Trump is in the executive administration, and it's going to be the most conservative. Imagine if you had Texas's, because he did say Texas, didn't he? Texas is environmental policies, but it had to be applied to the entirety of the United States, and it had to affect the entirety of the United States. So term, this is more actually going to increase the quality of life for a majority of U.S. citizens than what it is at now based on Trump's environmental policies. All right. Um, okay, so now we're going on to the next disadvantage, by the way, modeling. First of all, let's talk about China. China actually has made an extremely progressive um, green technology and, um, and climate change combating in policies and pass them through at the end of last year and at the beginning of this year. It is no longer at the bottom of this list as they would imagine. And speaking of which, India can very easily follow China. Also, oh, U.S. modeling works, especially if they're working as a whole country. I agree, which means that if U.S. modeling categorically denies climate change as a whole country, this is going to affect way more countries than it is if... Um, this is going to affect way more countries than it is if only Texas is denying this. Speaking of which, California is once again the richest, the most populous state in the nation. And not only can it affect states around it in order to ooh, change their climate policies, but it can still very well on its own affect many other countries' climate change policies. Anyways. Um, 
So then they talk about the extinction and they talk about global warming. And I agree that this will be terrible if this were to happen wholeheartedly. However, the reason that this is not going to happen is because we are going to combat it at a state level because it's the only way we can. And if right now at the federal level, all policies of climate change are going to kill us. They are going to kill us. If we, be on, if we give it out to the states, then individual states can create individual policies and have a moving relationship with each other. On to the counterpoint. So the plan text, it was that they should reform the EPA. How? I don't know. They didn't say in the plan text. <laughs> Second of all, they said they were going to increase autonomy for the EPA. The, um, the autonomy of the EPA means, I assume, under the director of the EPA, who is put in by Donald Trump, who agrees with Donald Trump, who believes in what Donald Trump says. Or maybe they don't mean the autonomy, the autonomy of the EPA that way. Maybe they mean the autonomy of who controls the EPA at the head, which is just Donald Trump himself. So turn, this adopts both of their advantages because now they have Donald Trump, or maybe Donald Trump's puppet, with less, with less checkbacks and more money wasting it. They say that this is going to cut bureaucratic red, red tape, but the entire reason of our multi field actors is that you need bureaucratic red tape when you have somebody who you cannot trust in the White House. That is necessary. Our plan increases bureaucratic red tape because Trump needs a check back. And yes, this is mutually exclusive because it's a terrible kind of button we don't want. All right. Now we're going to talk about states. State responsibilities add one. They said that states can do, still do it. They can still negotiate it. However, this is the thing, is that any money that you receive from the EPA, you can only use to combat our climate change or to help the environment through the EPA's very, very specific policies. Policies that change every administration because they're headed up by administrations. And, um, and then, once again, they said less solvency without out whole country, except for that's not true because the only thing that, at, that um, garners more solvency with the whole country is more solvency of modeling, of categorically denying climate change and categorically doing nothing to combat climate change. That's really all they put on this ink, except for that flip at Michigan, people there were going to get worse, except for no, they're going to get better. The reason that flip Michigan cannot negotiate with other countries now is because they are broke. By doing this, states can still get, still get the federal subsidies, but they get to do what they want. They are not limited by the EPA's policies and their protection policies on that. All right. Um, first of all, they said that the counter plan solves. However, the counter plan actually solves worse. All right, so the whole point that we're doing this is because Things cannot be unilaterally decided by executive orders. Um, I have it written down somewhere. There we go. So, from yesterday, for 100 days in office, Trump put in 78 executive orders. That's how many he signed into laws. Presidents cannot be allowed to unilaterally react to things without any sort of checkbacks. Presidents are not elected by the people. They're elected by the people that the people elect. There we go. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Twister, it's fine. I feel like everybody here knew what I meant. Did you have that written down? No. I feel like that was a quoted zinger that you had. Like. Nope. Straight off the stiff red cup. Fuck you. We elect the people. I think it's the president. You can't say that people like what an actor or an actor was in the by the POI. Someone needs to go back. It's up to you. Believe me. Okay. Full faith. So what we have, uh, I guess in order that we've been going. Cool. All right, so let's start now. So we'll go with the extra T. So we're going to, on the extra T, we're going to accept the current interpretation. There was no uh, real argument, uh, uh, no like offense on it, so you're not going to, you're going to discard it right now. Let's get into the DA first, okay? Nate. The main argument is, is just that they charge using the uniqueness against our uniqueness specifically without necessarily telling you why. So when we specifically tell you that the Clean Air Agreement has been enacted by the EPA, they don't specifically tell you. The only thing they tell you, well, the EPA's got it, but don't say how somehow it's affecting the clean air. We, when we specifically tell you that the clean air agreement is dealing with industries in terms of how much they are polluting, and it's not just as all well your big pharmaceutical companies, it's all your farming industry, that all as well affect how your air and environment is being affected. So that means when they don't address it, so that means our uh, current uniqueness still stands. Second on the green tech, they make the argument that as well, they're going to cut by 31% in the future. But what we're arguing by them currently doing this now 
they're coming 100% right now. Right now, 100% is gone. Even though they want to argue that Trump is bad, they're still using Trump to cut everything right now under their particular via, uh, under their particular plan. So that means now links still stand. They actually, they plan supercharges the out particular internal link as well. The main argument has been the tech bubble by far, and using California as an example. But we're telling you that uh, businesses are using uh, have a profit mindset. So by the time when you're cutting these particular subsidies as well, that incentivizes them to take any sort of green tech initiative as well because they can get a profit, when you completely cut that, they're just going to carry on with what they've been doing, which is this particular oil production. And as well, there's no more regulation on the air, as we currently tell you. So all these farming industries, these big farmers, are just going to carry on the particular initiative to get more profit because that's how businesses and big businesses uh, carry on and, uh, and as well, which means impact still stands in terms of the quality of life. The only argument is they're turning this because we're increasing the quality of life because now the states have somehow the power. No, states still don't have the power because now these big businesses can do whatever they want because no states whatsoever. So we're not changing whatever law states have. They don't specifically tell you how states are going to now enact their own version of the clean air, which will be extra topical as well. So that means they still stand. So that means they specifically cause this disadvantage. Going into the second. The main argument has been that China has been kind of progressive last year, uh, specifically recently. The only reason they were progressive is because the United States influence on China. Yeah, the only thing that reason they've been progressive is because how the U.S. is acting, which is pretty much our entire, dis uh, our entire disadvantage. Because even with the Paris Agreement, both the U.S., uh, China and India did not sign specifically because the U.S. does not want to. So that means the U.S. as a federal government, they say that states have the power, but as far as we know, like if, if they, we buy the argument that California is so great, which it is, uh, but uh, <laughs> that they can influence the other countries. So that means not only California will have implemented their own version of the Paris Agreement, so that means what stops China and India from following currently California's views on environmental policies. They don't right now. They view the U.S. as a whole. So that means this doesn't sense, especially on the link. when. As a federal government, because the rest of the world doesn't see individual state, they see the U.S. acting. When you cut the federal agency that specifically look at this environmental policy, it shows the other states or countries that, well, they don't care about the environment. Why do this when we can easily produce our, our own? And second, they say they made progressive, they only made progressive in terms of increasing green technology, but in the sense of the mining rare earth and uh, minerals, such as in green technology, but it's that rare earth minerals actually cause a lot of pollution in the environment. So that's really making the worst life worse for Chinese uh, people living in the country, which is one billion, which we shouldn't forget. Uh, so that means they don't address our internal link. So you're going to extend our internal link when we tell you. That means this country is going to use more resources that use, which are uh, finite resources. So that means we're going to have more depletion. And they're not going to follow the US. And as well, these three countries that we tell you are the biggest pollutants in the world. The biggest pollutants of most of the global warming that we have is caused by these three countries because they influence a lot of policies in other countries where they invest as well. So on the impacts we see global warming extinction because that's what happened. Second, depletion of resources which is still done with fuel. So that means we're going to use all our particular resources and that means we actually go extinct in two ways. You have two ways of warning. Uh, going to the counter plan. So, the main they say that we're going to increase autonomy. At the point where we're saying, we specifically tell you, able to, that specifically tells we're increasing autonomy by so cutting the bureaucracy aspect and as well allowing just the, in, the agency itself to just deal with it without the president influence. The only argument mostly that they make is that, well, Trump put a puppet in this so again, sort of have an effect. Yes, they might have put someone at the top of it, but if we make the agency its own autonomy, it's that whoever is the head can't do just everything on its own. They can't just enact because there are other members as well. We are not voting and as well participating in the regulation of the EPA. What's happening right now is that Trump is using his executive, executive power to override that and as well just facilitate and add to the particular uh, his own policy. So by cutting that, we're saying that now this his own puppet is left alone. There's no string attached that helps him move the puppet because now he has to follow with others. Uh, yes, question? How is this still part of the government if it's in the government? No, I'm saying that it's just going to be independent agency that still does, still have 
Like Trump is not just going to be affecting the negative. Same as the Federal Reserve, they function autonomously. Same as the Federal Reserve, uh, fu function auto autonomously. Except and that, that's all solvency. Yeah, extend as all solvency, which they don't tell you. So we check back for global warming, so that means there's another way. And even if you don't buy our color plan, he said the disadvantages clearly happen because of the case. See, so going into case, they made arguments. Respond on our arguments on advantage one is that any money of climate change and policy that the federal government has, yes, but that's not really a refutation to our argument because now that supercharges Abel's argument as saying they can already do other things right now. So that means any sort of funding in terms of climate change policies that are beneficial as the Clean Air Act, they don't have access anymore. So that means the current policies are not solving. They don't tell you as to how. They're going to not increase their own funding in this particular area when there's no sort of like, no warranted analysis as to how that's going to happen. Without the EPA, they're not going to receive any federal, any federal funding. There's no reason for them to receive any federal Yeah, second, without the EPA, there's no reason as well. They're going to receive any additional funding as well. So that means that's not going to happen. Second as well, on as well, on the link level, we specifically tell you, don't address extent this argument of like, states are not solving currently for Flint. When they use that as a link level and they don't respond to it, so that means currently they're cool, but the whole aspect of them going to the federal government is because state is not doing their jobs. So that's specifically as to why. So that means on the impact when they say a second internal in California will follow, because of the arguments I make on the DAs, uh, from the DA saying that these other countries are not going to follow these other states which have different policies, and as some people that voted for Trump, half of the people as well as states, believe global warming isn't real. So why is it they're going to specifically follow California? Second year, uh, advantage, counter plan will tell you they solve, they say that it makes it worse, it doesn't specifically tell you as well, but we're telling you they, it's better, because of the argument on the DA, they make it worse, and that's why they don't solve, because states can already do what they want right now. Overview, counter plan, disadvantages, case in order. So today you're going to be voting for the negative for two reasons. First is the fact that counter plan is going to be solving better every time for reasons I will get into in a second. But even if you don't buy the fact that counter plan is going to be solving better, you still have the fact that the affirmative is not net beneficial, and we'll get to that after the counter plan analysis. So first onto the counter plan. Except across the entirety of the solvency, it wasn't touched on whatsoever. The only argumentation here was saying that because it's done through Trump, that means it's going to be more wasting money. It's going to be getting worse because it's going to be done through Trump's um, policies and through Trump's profit. But as my partner explained, it's going to be voting members that are going to be checking back against Trump's puppet. As we mentioned, it's going to be done in the matter of the Federal Reserve. They have a members of the board who get to vote on these policies. And because we're increasing the autonomy of the EPA, they're going to be able to enact these policies that are currently being held back by Trump's puppet and by Trump himself, which means that we garner full sovereignty. We're going to be increasing the efficiency of the EPA, which means less wasted resources, which means more green technology investment. That's going to be our net benefit that they do not garner. So we solve for the entirety of the affirmative, and we garner this net benefit. And for these reasons, you're going to be voting on the counter plan. Next, if you don't buy that, this the fact that the affirmative plan is still not net, benefit, net beneficial. On the disadvantage. So they say that the so right now the plan is school. It's what's happening. The states have this power, but they're going to be make it worse because they're going to be cutting off the subsidies to this green technology that's currently being done through the EPA. They give no reasons that they're still going to be done through the federal government post plan. The only reason that these companies are getting this investment is because there is a federal agency bringing it down. There's not going to be any of that post plan. So the only reason that companies as a whole, that big businesses, is even directly going green is because of these subsidies, which is that if you pass time, they have no reason to. Like my partner mentioned, the pharma industry, the agricultural industry, they're not going to be caring about the air anymore, specifically through the uniqueness of the Clean Air Act, which went untouched. 
this means that we're always going to be decreasing quality of life if we pass the plan. So, yeah, moving on to the second disadvantage of modeling. Once again, the only reason that China is doing anything is because of the United States' influence. The specific warrant on how they didn't sign the Paris Agreement because the United States didn't want to went completely untouched. Now, they said that China might, and India might follow, but the only reason China is doing it in the first place is because of the United States. And other countries right now are not following states. China and India did not look to California like, oh, they're progressive, we should do what they're doing. They didn't care what California is thinking. They only care what the United States is doing, which means that once we pass the counter climate center, we're going to be solving better because the United States is not going to be denying climate change as a whole. It's just going to be the federal government doing, uh, protecting the environment. On to case itself. So they're not going to be receiving any money from the federal government. They say that states um, can still get federal funding post plan, but they give no reason for this. The only reason that they receive any federal funding right now is because of the EPA, which means that there will be no funding, and which means that states cannot do it on their own. Right now, they have the full plans. It's still totally non-unique. They can make these arrangements. They can do their own climate deals if they want to, but they're not solving in the status quo, so there's no reason they'll be solving post plan, uh, which means that they are not net beneficial. At best, they're just reenacting quo without any federal help which means that point is only going to get worse. The case turn still stands on the first advantage, on the second advantage, disadvantage. On the second advantage, the only reason they say is counter plan solves worse. They give no reasons, cross apply all the solvency from the counter plan that went completely untouched, and the turns on this still stands on how making the states do it is still going to always be worse at the point which they cannot solve in the status quo, despite them already have being all these rights, it's still not unique, which means that they do not have access to any of their impacts, not to mention that they didn't address the fact that it's going to be decreasing democracy because of the Supreme Court, etc. Starting time now. I am allergic to peanut butter. <laughs> now, because I'm allergic to peanut butter, when I go somewhere, I can only order certain things. Now, when I have an allotted amount of cash, let's say like ten dollars, um, I'll look on the menu to buy something that's not peanut butter. Now, the United States is also allergic to peanut butter. However, the Trump administration is a huge fan of peanut butter, <laughs> and by cutting a certain amount of money, say three dollars, out of my ten dollar budget, um, then I'm going to have seven dollars to buy. Still just peanut butter, because that's all the Trump administration wants to buy. Now, by looking at this example, we can tie this into the case and the um, opposition's plan that by just because we're not going to be cutting the EPA, and the EPA is still going to be around, it's still going to be performing the actions that the entity of the administration wants to fulfill. It doesn't matter that they're acting autonomously. It doesn't matter that the director appointed by Donald Trump can act however he wants. Maybe Donald Trump can't tell him, hey, put your finger here. It's okay because the director might want to put his finger right there. So whatever we see acted through by the EPA is still going to be the same rhetoric and the same ideology held by the administration as a whole. Moving into their counter plan, they want to simply reform the EPA uh, by making it autonomous. Now, they said that they wanted to make it autonomous like the Federal Reserve, which deals with money, which is ones and zeros. And if we want to talk about our lives as ones and zeros, then this is not the environment to be doing that in. We should not be treating something that handles our water, handles our air quality, handles our entire quality of life and our environments as a industry that acts autonomously and treats it like a bunch of ones and zeros. So what we need is we need the action of the states and the cooperation of them, uh, those entities to be acting um, on these policies. Um, they say that, um, moving on to their uh, first uniqueness, which is that, uh, uh, their first disadvantage of uniqueness, uh, which is stating that states will then no longer have the funds from the, uh, from the U.S. federal government to um, subsidize private companies. However, with the new actions and the new regulations and the gutting of the EPA, there's not going to be an EPA to give that money to those people anyway. And even if we have the EPA still around, there's going to be a 30% budget cut, putting it at the lowest it's been in 40 years, allowing the EPA only to give, these money, uh, give the money to the states that can only use it under EPA policy, meaning that these people may not even be able to give the amount of money to these subsidized businesses that they want to, not providing any solvency through the counter plan. Um, also, uh, moving on to their model, uh, their disadvantage to um, which was the model. They say that the um, United States uh, is viewed as a whole by the world. And 
that it is, and if we act the way then, um, that we're going to under the Trump administration, then the United States will see, uh, then the world will see the United States act as, in the words of uh, Ludacris, uh, act a fool. And we're gonna, everybody's going to be seeing the United States act very poorly towards the environmental step, um, or towards the environmental realm, and they will not have any, um, have any interest in following the U.S. Just because, I, I will quote my mother, just because your friends go jump off a bridge, are you going to do it too? <laughs> See, now what China recently did just in the last couple of years is not only have they made progressive movements in green tech, but they have surpassed the United States. China will not only look to the states that are acting in the U.S., but they will see states acting individually for the progress of environmental um, friendliness and um, environmental progression, and they will follow those models, not those that are going to be denying climate change, as we can see China as a whole has not. Inherently, those like India and other such will follow China. Um, uh, and even if you bought the influence of the U.S., China is following the influence of Obama's America, not Trump's America. Um, moving on um, to our advantages, the first advantage of res uh, state responsibility. They say the states can already act and they're not acting in status quo. They're not acting in status quo because they're regulated by the EPA. We're not cutting the funding, we're cutting the strings. By cutting the strings that the EPA has on these states, we allow states to spend the money that they have however they see fit. Like I said with my peanut butter metaphor, it doesn't matter how much you give me if I can only buy stuff that's going to kill me. If I can't fix and I can't address the problems that exist, then the problems that matter, I can have all the money in the world, but my hands will be tied. We want the states to have the opportunity um, to not only put forth their own versions of the Paris Climate Agreement, a reformed EPA for themselves, but they want to act for the, uh, we want to see, um, we want to see these states um, act without the bars provided um, or restricted by the federal, uh, federal government. And our second advantage, which is democracy, which was um, ultimately thrown out by the negative and not addressed um, and dropped. Um, this is also, uh, we are inherently going to be gaining the cooperation of the United States and a nonpartisan um, action. Um, and digressing back to the actions of California, we will not only see an action from California, but those states that want to support it. Because it doesn't matter if we go with the, if we go with the counter plan, we see an entire United States act without, uh, we see an entire United States act in ignorance. But when we go with the affirmative plan, we see the states make the effort that they can. Thank you. Thank you.